Israel is the first foreign power allowed to buy it, and the experience of one Israeli pilot soon proves how durable the F-15 can be. Captain Svi Nadavi experiences a pilot's worst nightmare when a training exercise goes horribly wrong. He is flying a simulated airfield defense mission and is tasked with intercepting hostile aircraft when disaster strikes. I saw what in hindsight was the number three, which is the leader of the second, the rear pair. And he was upside down. And I, I was at around 13, 14,000 feet and I shot a missile. Even though he was upside down, he continued to go up. And I was like this, so it was stomach to wing. We couldn't see each other. And uh, we collided. Big commotion, big bang. The A4 um, basically fireballed immediately. And I found myself with uh, maybe 30 degrees nose down attitude. And the aircraft was spinning. Right after the crash, I told my navigator, prepare to eject, we're going to eject. I opened afterburner, which is a totally opposite instinct when you're spinning towards the ground. Then the roll slowly stopped, and slowly I was able to bring the nose back up. Um, I told my wingman to come close and to inspect me. There was a huge spray of fuel that was being drawn out of the wing, and, um, it, it, and it basically camouflaged um, what was going on there. Nadavi survives the mid-air collision. He is 10 miles out from the nearest airfield and hopes to still land safely. But the pilot cannot see what has happened behind the spray of leaking fuel. His F-15 has been so badly damaged in the collision that he is flying on just one wing. After a devastating mid-air collision, Captain Zvi Nadavi finds himself flying a seriously damaged F-15. Somehow, he is able to regain control over his aircraft and attempt a landing. I approach the airfield. Um, I cross the threshold where usually in an F-15 you cross at 130 knots. I crossed at anywhere between 250 to 260 knots. It was landing at approximately twice um, the normal landing speed. I put the tail hook down. Um, there was a cable at about a third of the runway, and we went into that cable. But because of the speed, the, the, the hook is not built for those speeds and the hook basically tore off the airplane. We stopped maybe 20 feet short of uh, the barrier. As I was running at the last 50 knots, um, bleeding off, the, my wingman said, you're not gonna believe what you flew on. And I opened the canopy and I reached back to shake the hand of the navigator and as I was reaching back, that was the first time that I looked and I saw that I didn't have a wing um, on the right-hand side. It's highly likely that if I would have seen it clearly, I would have ejected, because it was obvious you couldn't really fly an airplane like that. I don't think any other aircraft could have taken that amount of damage or that portion of its, its uh, flight surfaces removed and continued to bring us home safely. The best testament was a good friend of mine who was an F-16 pilot. And he crossed and he saw that there was no wing and his first words was, can I transfer to F-15s? It should be aerodynamically impossible for an aircraft to fly with one wing missing. McDonnell Douglas sends a team to investigate the incident. Their first inclination was it was a taxiing accident. It couldn't happen in air in the airplane. And only when they later went to analyze it and said, okay, the F-15 has a very wide body and you fly fast enough and you're like a rocket and you don't need wings. 
the Eagle has done the impossible. If a pilot can land an F-15 with just one wing, the plane should be able to endure unimaginable punishment on the battlefield.